I'm ready to die. I find a spot near a tree and lie down. Men, women, and children, some like me not yet dead, lie here too. A breeze stirs my hair. It brings the stench of the dead, a smell that I'm used to. Dying under a tree will be nicer than in the stinking barracks. All the fences are lined with bodies, piled higher than a man standing tall. Not that a man stands tall anymore. I'm nine years old. I've spent most of my childhood in a ghetto, a work camp, concentration camps, and a death march. Bergen-Belsen is the worst of all. There's no water, not even in the filthy puddles of yesterday. Suddenly, the quiet is broken. I hear an unfamiliar sound and look up. People are running. Men and women who never walk faster than a shuffle are running. I want to see where they're going, but I can't stand up. I'm sick. People who never talk louder than a whisper are shouting. Soldiers in khaki uniform are walking nearby. I can, I can tell they aren't German soldiers by the way the prisoners greet them with shout of joy. How strange. Some of the soldiers are throwing up. Nazi soldiers never throw up. Ich said Frey, you're free, a word's on the loudspeaker. We are the English army, be calm. Food and medical help are on their way. We are free, women shout around me in Yiddish. What does free mean? I don't understand. I'm too sick and tired to move. I want my mother. throughout the state of Israel. We know that the Chappelle family are listening and watching Jerusalem, for they represent the spirit not only of survival, but of rebuilding and redemption. From the ashes of the concentration camps, they came to America. They built a society in Los Angeles, but they turned their eyes and their hearts always to Jerusalem. In this moment, this becomes sacred ground, and we are grateful to the Chappelles for keeping us always on the target of remembrance. And the symbol of Yad Vashem here reminds us again and again for every person, the millions who pass through this gateway to health of what they have contributed. This theme of the Shoah and the commemoration of Yom HaShoah has to do with rebuilding and the creation of the State of Israel by those who survived the Shoah, that 50% of the army that fought in the War of Independence were those who came out of the ghettos and the concentration camps to build a state. And so many of them 
sacrifice their lives again for what we have today in this magnificent state. And I'd like to ask um, and introduce one of the newest of our distinguished members of the Hadassah Medical Organization family. Relly, could you please come forward? She is the Director of Nursing. Is that the right title? Yeah, that's the right title. Okay, so you spe we're speaking to California, to all of the United States, and to representatives of the donors uh, to Hadassah that made this place possible. Do you want me to tell a story in my family? Yes. Okay. Well, my two parents, uh, the second generation of the Holocaust. My mother was a child. Sorry if I would cry. My mother was a child. She was three years old. And she was very, very sick at the time of the, end of the war. And they took her to uh, her father, put her in a place where the people, orphans, people will lost her fathers and mothers and put her in one place in a, in a, in a, in a sick, uh, with a sick department. She was there alone uh, for two years. After that, she said always, this, they, tell, they told her to change her name. Her name was Hannah Blumlich. But she, she told her the name is Anuchka. Don't tell that you're a Jew. You shouldn't tell that you're a Jew. And she was said to the, to the children over there, she said, no, I'm, I'm Hannah Blumich, I'm not Anuchka. After two years, one of the child, her, his parents came and took him and he said, there's an, another Jewish girl in this place. She is Hannah Blumich. You, we would have to take her with <coughs> us. To make the long story short, she went on a train, a Herzog train, uh, uh, to, uh, they took all the children that have no parents and no families on the train. She was in typhus, she was sick, very sick in typhus. And she was about uh, six years old. In the train, a sister that separated from her during the war, in the train, a sister, a someone told her sister that there is a, a Jewish girl. She, she, she said that her name is Hannah Blumlich, and your, your, your last name is also Blumlich. So she said, okay, I will come to, to, seek, to see maybe this is, uh, this is the real, uh, she is real my sister, because I didn't see my sister for two years. My mother has a big spot on her belly, a big, a big black spot on her belly. That's what she remembers as a girl when they went in the parents' house. She went to the, to the, in the, the train, she went to the, to the last uh, 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 car, to the last, to the last car in the train, and she said, who is Hannah Bloom? She said, I'm, I'm. She was very sick in typhus. And her sister didn't say anything. She just put her shirt and she see the black spot. She said, yeah, you are, you are my sister. And that's why at this moment they never separate. After that, they, they, after that they came to Israel and they were uh, in Petah Tikva. And her, their father was looking only for her, uh, her sister, Rivka. She, he didn't know that she survived the war. So after that, he was looking for Rivka. And he, he found out Rivka and he found both of them. And they never separate from them. My mother is alive, she's 80, uh, 83 years old. Today at four o'clock she will be on TV. They will show her story on TV on four and, uh, four and a half. They're gonna be on TV. And she will tell the story about that. And uh, this is the memory that I remember for my mother. Um, and for me this day is a very special day. We'll never forget, we'll never forget. And this is also what I'm telling my, my children, that Israel, Israel should be, we never forget, okay? We never forget the Holocaust, and we should tell that to children and our, and, and our uh, uh, grandfather. Thank you very much. Thank you. Candle to be lit by the Smiths on behalf of Hadassah, the 
Women Zionist Organization of America, Joanne and Jim. during the Shoah and I would like to make this tribute in memory of my two parents, my mother and my father who passed away two weeks ago. Um, Greek Jewry is the unsung story of the Holocaust. Um, Greece was divided into two parts during the Holocaust. Northern part of Greece was invaded immediately by the Germans. The southern part of Greece was taken over by the Italians. My parents, by grace of their birth in the island of Rhodes, were Italian and during the Italian occupation lived very difficult but hard lives. But at a certain point in time, the Germans felt that the Italians were not doing the right job and they took over the rest of Greece. From the night that they took over Greece, my grandfather on my maternal side put his family into hiding. He was the president of the community. Righteous gentles hid my, my mother, my aunt, and my uncle. They were hidden in a home. They pretended to be Catholics. They were able, speaking French speaking, they said their prayers to, to Jesus Christ. And um, every evening, the SS officer who was billeted in the same house would sit my aunt in his knee, and she would play the piano for him. On Pesach 1943, the night, my grandfather, who was in hiding, got the family together. He had gotten enough money together to, get, uh, to take the family via the hills to Turkey. All the money of the family was sewn into the clothes of my mother, who, born in 1935, was a little girl of seven, of eight, and her sister, who was um, at that time 10 years old. All the money of the family was sewn into their clothes, burdened by that. They walked a little bit like the story of the Sound of Music, but they walked to the coast of Turkey, to the boat that was to take them to, the, to Palestine. Unfortunately, there were thousands trying to get to Palestine at the time, and the boat that my father had hired had been taken by others, although it had been paid for by him. They hid in the hills with virtually no food for another three weeks until he got the money together and paid for another boat and came to Palestine. But that was the beginning for them of their Zionism and their desire for the state of Israel and to help build the state of Israel that would come into being after the war. My father, on the other hand, also born on the island of Rhodes, was saved by going to live in the land called Rhodesia, southern Rhodesia at the time, as a little boy of eight years old. And he then fought in the British armored forces. He fought in Africa. and At the end of the fighting in Africa, they were taken to fight in Italy on the way through going towards Italy, they met up with refugees, Jewish refugees, who had absolutely no food. They shared with them all their rations, gave them all their rations, and as they said goodbye, and drove on towards their battlefield, those refugees surrounded them, sang Hatikva, and my father to his dying day always remembers them and wonders what came of their fate. Did they make it to Israel? At the end of the war, my father went back to his native island of Rhodes, saw that the community had been totally wiped out. He received compassionate leave as he was being demobbed to go to the island of Rhodes. Understanding what had happened, he made an additional stop on his way home in Eretz Israel, then Palestine. I have a photograph of him standing on Mount Scopus, none of us knowing what the future would hold for all of us. And from that day forth, and when they met and married, my parents built a Jewish home a Zionist home and nurtured me to be a proud Jew and a Zionist and 
we are proud that I'm married here, have four children, and seven grandchildren in the land of Israel. May the memory of all the Jews who perished in Greece and throughout the world be for a blessing. So, this is Human resource. And we are going to sing, sing a song talking about um, living the life. שנספו על קידוש השם בידי המרצחים הגרמנים הנאצים ועוזריהם משערי עמים. לכן הבעל הרחמים יסתירם בסתר כנפיו לעולמים ויצרור מצרור החיים את נשמותיהם. אדוני הוא נחלתם בגן עדן תהם מנוחתם ויעמדו לגורלם לקץ הימים ונאמר אמן. 